Evil is not committed by people who feel uncertain about their righteousness, who question their own motives, who worry about betraying themselves. The evil in this world is committed by the spiritual fat cats, by the Pharisees of our own day, the self-righteous who think they are without sin because they are unwilling to suffer the discomfort of significant self-examination. <laughs> What's up guys, hope you are having a good day, and welcome. In this video, we are having a trip down memory lane, we will be reviewing a significant event, an event that shook the world of men. The so-called event was about someone saying some pretty interesting things about men. And we will contrast it with what the American psychiatrist M. Scott Peck said about a particular type of people. We will be taking quotes from his book, People of the Lie. So, without further ado, let's get down to business. This is a PSA for all the men out there and all the boys who think they're men, but they're actually boys. Shame, shame, shame. Shame is one of the four major arrows of a low value woman. It's part of a low value woman's pathology. This is gonna be the summer of canceling boys. All of my friends are attractive. All of my friends are successful. Almost every single one of them have an issue with men. If all of these women, including myself, are having issues, then I have to think, it might not be us, it might be men. Utterly dedicated to preserving their self-image of perfection, malignant narcissists are unceasingly engaged in the effort to maintain the appearance of moral purity. While they seem to lack any motivation to be good, they intensely desire to appear good. Their goodness is all on a level of pretense. It is, in effect, a lie. This is why they are the people of the lie. It is not their sins, per se, that characterize malignant narcissists. Rather, it is the subtlety and persistence and consistency of their sins. This is because the central defect of malignant narcissists is not the sin, but the refusal to acknowledge it. Rather than blissfully lacking a sense of morality, like the psychopath, malignant narcissists are continually engaged in sweeping the evidence of their evil under the rug of their own consciousness. It is out of their failure to put themselves on trial that their evil arises. A predominant characteristic of the behavior of malignant narcissists is scapegoating, explains Peck. Because in their hearts they consider themselves above reproach, they must lash out at anyone who does reproach them. Since they must deny their own badness, they must perceive others as bad. They never think of themselves as evil. On the other hand, they consequently see much evil in others. It is not just the guys in Los Angeles, Nashville, Dallas. They, quite frankly, I think they're trash all over this country. Another sign of a low value woman is she often insults. I'm tired of dealing with trash men. If you want to mix in people like me and people like my friends who are go-getters, please don't mix us in with the Tatianas. If we find out that you are also talking to five Tatianas who have nothing going on, Houston, we have a problem. It will be a cold day in hell when I chase a man. Not one single man on planet Earth is worth making any woman feel like she is not good enough. What is the cause of this arrogant self-image of perfection, this particularly malignant type of narcissism? Basically, it is fear. Malignant narcissists are continually frightened that they will come face to face with their own evil. This terror is so chronic, so interwoven into the fabric of their being, that they may not even feel it as such. And if they could, their omnipresent narcissism will prohibit them from ever acknowledging it. Strangely enough, malignant narcissists are often destructive because they are attempting to destroy evil. The problem is that they misplace the locus of the evil. Instead of destroying others, they should be destroying the sickness within themselves. As life often threatens their self-image of perfection, malignant narcissists are often busily engaged in hating and destroying that life, usually in the name of righteousness. They sacrifice others to preserve their self-image of perfection. They create for those under their dominion a miniature sick society. But if all of these women, including myself, are having issues, then I have to think, it might not be us. Usually the common denominator is the problem. And if the common denominator is you, then usually it's you that's the problem. But I will give her the benefit of the doubt and say, current Western culture 
is not ideal for finding a mate. Now, if you wanna be inconsistent and you wanna ghost and you wanna fall off the radar, that's fine, but I'm gonna give you a pro tip. People like me and people like my friends, we aren't gonna really give a shit after that. We don't really care. And do you see what I'm talking about? That, that attitude of like, me and my friends, oh, we don't care, we're done. That, the, it's just so, so sour. Um, I find this attitude that she presents throughout this whole video, this attitude that my dating problems and my friends dating problems are the problem of men and that men are the problem and that there are no good men. This attitude bothers the crap out of me for several reasons. So despite what she would go on to say in her follow-up video, she kind of seems to be doubling down on the idea that just men are trash. And I will say yeah. that it's true. A lot of guys are trash. A lot of women are trash. A lot of mm -hmm. people are trash nowadays, Yes, especially yeah in regard to dating. So I'm not gonna push back on that. But I think, you know, if you are someone, and this is not just an issue Tommy Laren has, where you can't find anybody, at a certain point, you need to step back and think, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Cause there are good people out there who do want to date seriously, start a family and all that. And if, if you can't find any of them, you may be just looking in the wrong place or not putting out maybe the right message or the right signals. I talked to my mom about this a lot and she says, well, maybe it's just the guys in Texas. Maybe it's just the guys in Los Angeles. It is not just the guys in Los Angeles, Nashville, Dallas, and it's not, they're not any better in the Midwest. They, quite frankly, I think they're trash all over this country. I've been thinking about this a lot lately too, and I talked to my mom about it, and she suggested that maybe it's the men who I'm attracting. Maybe it's the men I'm choosing. I love my mom, but she is so out of touch. It's not me, mom. Men are trash everywhere in this country. Tommy said that we don't want you to just text us. We want you to take us out to dinner. We wanna see you. We wanna go on a hike. We wanna have coffee with you. Make plans with us. First, I find it really damaging when someone of influence is ranting about this and, and sort of um, spewing this Reddit rhetoric because young girls do kind of see this and I think this is really damaging to young girls and just women in general because first of all it's not true that all men are bad and if you're having a perpetual problem dating it's um, either the people you're choosing or you or it's a combination of both so that's my stance on it. She's trying to compare basically how women view men to the same as how men view women. It doesn't work exactly that way there are some men that are looking for successful women, but most men out there really don't give them about your success. They prefer a woman that knows how to be a woman, a woman that they can pretty much get along with, that they can tolerate for longer than five minutes without wanting to blow their heads off. Um, usually a woman that is easy on the eyes, feminine, um, that really matters. Men don't like masculine women. Them, if they know that they're successful and they're intelligent, they might have an attitude problem. She goes on and says that men are trash. She uses that term quite a bit throughout the rant. And she also states that I am not a feminist. Don't take this as another feminist rant. I love men. I think men are great. I think men have failed themselves and they failed us but I think they're great. I just want to help you out. So <laughs> I don't think you're helping men out. I think you're being a giant C. Gosh, I mean, Tommy is just too genuine at this point. I mean, the fact that she took the time and effort to make a 15 minute video detailing how little she actually cares about men who don't seem to want to date her just proves how little she actually cares about men who don't seem to want to date her. All in all, can I just say how proud I am of Tommy Lauren for pushing through her internalized misogyny, ceasing to capitulate to the patriarchy, and finally joining the sisterhood. And seriously, can I just say as a side note to all the women watching this video, even though I'm sure Daisy Cousins' fan base is like 99.99% angry, straight, white, misogynistic MRAs, but you know, whatever. To all the women who may be watching, remember, the sisterhood is always there for you. So long as you believe everything we believe, say only things that we agree with, and associate only with people that we approve of, we're like one big happy sorority. Once again, at the end of the day, life is a choice. That will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Thank you.